What's up guys, it's Naf here. So recently I got myself a Ring of Fortune through Manaphos pickpocketing and was really interested to try it out at God Wars Dungeon 2. So first things first, I was pretty low on Saradamon Bruce and decided to loot my kingdom, which hasn't been collected in nearly 3 months now. I have my workers 100% in herbs and the remaining 40% or so in wood. Solely, I'm just after herbal supplies and also birds nests. So the return from that in general, there's quite a few decent herbs there that will help me make high level potions, but right now I was mainly just interested in the bird's nest for Sarah Damon Bruise. So in the process of making the Sarah Bruise, I also hit 95 herb lore. Once I hit 96, I think I'll stop using my Jack of Trades or our two level herb lot, which will be pretty weird. I'm pretty sure I've been doing the Jack of Trades daily and putting it into herb lore for the better part of eight months or even more now. But with that out of the way, I had plenty of brews for the meantime and just needed to max out my Zamorak reputation before starting to actually kill the boss. So luckily I had my Dragon Rider seals left over from my recent Vindicta kills and on top of that I had spent around a month grinding Zarosian rep before beginning to kill Vindy with bounties and in that process I collected a lot of ingression fragments. These are yellow dust looking things that drop off any of the followers in God Wars Dungeon 2 and they can be used to summon followers for any faction you choose and this gives a pretty small amount of rep but it does add up if you collect a lot of fragments. So I've never actually done this before but it did seem pretty straightforward with the only limitation being you can't summon too many in one place because it literally floods the area with the faction's mobs. But regardless, I successfully maxed my reputation with fragments to spare as well. So this gives me a 100% increased drop chance from the Twin Furies and I also only require 20 kill count per one hour instance. So despite this being my first time attempting Twin Furies on my Iron Man, I have killed this boss a few times on my main. So I did have a relative understanding of the boss and the mechanics. In saying that, it didn't help that I forgot to use my tier 88 superior gear and bring unicorn scrolls to my unicorn to actually be useful. Because of this, the rng did take pity on my noobness and pretty quickly I did manage a dormant anima chest. Now to be honest, I didn't really need this so much. In total, I now have three of these chest pieces. So pretty quickly, I did realize you could resonance to negate the damage when the twins explode at the end of their rotation, which did make the boss immensely easier. Although unfortunately, you don't get the healing benefit from it either, but it does mean you don't have to take 4,000 damage every rotation you go through. So next, I got a Zarosian Essence. So this unfortunately, is pretty much junk for the most part and it has the same rarity as the weapons and the Zamorok crest. So it's definitely not what you want to see. Speaking of what you want to see, the next drop I get is a Blade of Nimora, which is the tier 85 main hand melee weapon. So I was pretty happy to get that unique drop out of the way pretty early. And the first kill of the next trip, I do manage another drop, but what would you know, it's a Zamorokian essence. So not much to say, it's nice to get rare unique drops from bosses, but the fact it could have been something much better does kind of suck. And clearly the game wants me to be happy about these Samorokian essences, because not long after, it decided to give me a second one on the same trip. So funnily enough I have three, which is enough to make up the Zamorokian portion of the essence required to upgrade one piece of God Wars Dungeon 2 gear. But not too soon after, I do get a real rare drop, a Crest of Zamorak, so I'm really happy about that. And to be honest, it's the loot I'm after the most, because the tier 80 ranged gear is actually a decent upgrade from my current best ranged gear, Armadil. And on the 10th and final instance of the day, I do get lucky again, getting the Blade of Avarice drop, which is the tier 85 offhand, and that means I have both weapons from the boss, and the only loot I now need is two Crests of Zamorak. And not long after, what would you know, another Zamoraki in essence. So that wraps it up for today's drops, as I'm now 10 hours in, and we'll pick it up tomorrow in the hopes of getting the two crests of Zamorak I need to make the full tier 80 range set. So also, taking a quick look at the total loot from today, so as you can see, all the rare drops at the bottom, which were just highlighted, along with the 299 Seals of Fury, which I will most likely hand in for Saren Reputation at some point. And in terms of the general loot, there's nothing too spectacular. As I've said in the past, God Wars Dungeon 2 drops great loot for Iron Man, and I will find use for most of this. 
One thing I particularly like about this boss is it drops a ton of coal, which I will use for Artisan's Workshop when I go for 90 smithing because I have been trying to keep on top of my player owned ports and do want to make the Tetsu gear at some point. But that just about wraps it up. So far I've really enjoyed Twin Furies and I dare say I think I like it more than Vindicta. But that may change if I go another 10 hours without getting the Crests of Zamorak I need. So let me know in the comments what your favourite God Wars Dungeon 2 boss is, as I'm pretty interested if I'm the only Twin Furies fan out there. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Yeah.